The main objective of our research is related with the development of the therapeutic approaches to treat the stroke based on the stem cell application. Stroke is one of the leading causes of the death and disability and it is very expensive for the society to deal with this disease. But unfortunately there is no well-established treatment to help the stroke survivors to recover their function. Therefore we believe and the experimental data support this belief that we can develop the therapeutic approach which will be based on application of the stem cells and help the patients to regain their lost function. There are different ways how the stem cells can support the recovery of the lost function in stroke patients. The cells can replace the dead cells and take over the function. They can also promote the recovery due to the increased plasticity so that by changing the environment of the damaged brain they can stimulate the recovery process which is occurring spontaneously in every damaged structure. And last but least, don't, not least, we have also discovered more than 10 years ago that brain has its own stem cells and then these stem cells after the stroke they start to produce new neurons and we are studying this phenomenon and would like to use this capacity of the brain for self-recovery to promote the functional recovery after the brain insult. I think the, the main challenge is that here we have a large number of patients. Uh, this is, stroke is the most common cause of disability in adult humans. We have a large number of patients who do not recover fully after stroke and there is actually, there is really not any effective treatment at all for these patients. So there, there is a lot of uh, therapy that needs to be developed for these patients. And the question is then, could stem cells be useful in this regard? And our approach is, and our main approach is to use stem cells to replace those nerve cells which have died in the stroke patient's brain. And we know from animal studies that you can you can replace neurons. You can get transplantation. Uh, by transplantation, you can get, get new neurons to survive in the stroke-damaged uh, uh, rodent brain, and you can also produce new neurons from the adult brain's own stem cells. The question is, can you really replace neurons which have died in a 50, 60-year-old human brain? That was science fiction 30 years ago, but we know from studies that we have performed here in Lund in patients with Parkinson's disease that neurons can actually survive transplantation. They can grow for several years and they can produce the signal molecule and they can improve the function in the brain of patients uh, with Parkinson's disease. Uh, and that is, that, that is also supporting that the the long-term goal that we have in patients with stroke is to replace those neurons which have died and by using, doing that to uh, improve the function and relieve the suffering from these patients. The major challenges I believe are um, to how to bring efficiently the knowledge which we generate at bench in the basic research to the clinic. And I think this is the most important part because stem therapy is a very translation oriented uh, unit of the researchers. And I believe that we are achieving this goal by moving from both directions. So clinic and clinical needs should define and determine what, what are the questions we will need to ask and uh, answer in the bench, in the basic research. And by moving from both directions, from clinical research towards the basic questions and from basic questions towards the clinical needs and applications, we can meet somewhere in between and get something valuable which can benefit patients and improve their quality of life. I think this is the approach which we would like to develop further and we believe that this is the basis for the future success. I think that uh, in the roadmap to the clinic, the most important thing now is to uh, produce the type of nerve cells that are needed in the stroke patient's brain. 
And we have actually based on a clinical study that we have performed where we have looked in patients with stroke, where are the lesions, where is the damage localized? Then we have determined based on that that these are the type of nerve cells that we have to produce in the lab. So that there is, has been a very clear interaction between the clinical findings and what we, our goal is now in the basic science lab. So that is actually, even if it's done in, the, in culture and done in animal models, this is actually a very important step on the translation of this, of this research to the clinic. Um, one of the biggest breakthroughs uh, of the recent years, I believe, are uh, the data which we obtained recently. Um, and we can demonstrate that the uh, stem cells which are obtained for human skin cells and generating neurons from these cells can be transplanted into the rodent brain who had the stroke-induced damage and then these cells can support the functional recovery uh, of those uh, animal experiments. I think this is the conceptually very important that the cells which have origin of different type, they are deriving from the skin cells, can be generated into the totally different type of cells, neurons, and they can promote the recovery. And conceptually, this paper, which has been published in stem cells last year, we believe lays the way for the future application of the induced pluripotent stem cells, which actually last year received the Nobel Prize in medical medicine and physiology. What I hope to achieve is uh, to be able to uh, replace neurons in the stroke damaged brain of a patient and thereby get these cells to survive and become built in to become integrated in the patient's brain and lead to improvement. But this is not easy. I started to transplant cells into the Parkinson patient's brain 30 years ago and we still do not have, although we have proof of concept, we know that it can work. We don't have a routine therapy, so you have to be, this is a, it's serious, it takes a long time, and you have to be very persistent in order to be successful. I hope I can experience this, but uh, I just want this research to continue, because if we give up too early, then we will never reach this goal. And I think this, is, this can really change the life completely for this type of patients, this group of patients? Yeah, this, this is a very good question. What are our long-term goals? I, I fully agree that this is uh, not something one can define by years when we will achieve this goal. This, uh, but the goal is to use the enormous potential which stem cell has and use it wisely and develop something based on those cells, which could improve the quality of life of the stroke patients, give them a hope and the possibility to become, to get integrated back to the society. Nowadays, this is in many cases not possible, but we believe that if we will develop this approach systematically and in evidence-based approach, in the ultimate goal, we can reach that they can be used for the benefit of the patients. I hope this goal will come sooner or later. I think there are two driving forces. Uh, one driving force is my medical background, and I've been a clinical neurologist since 1976. And I've seen many of these patients with Parkinson's disease, with stroke, with other diseases, where stem cell-based therapy, therapies have a potential to really change their life, their quality of life completely. But I would say that the strongest, uh, uh, the strongest reason, the strongest, my strongest uh, 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 driving force uh, is the passion for science. I started with science on the 1st of April 1968, and I have now been going on for 45 years, and I love this work, the intellectual challenge, the scientific goal, the interaction with people from different countries. And I really want to continue as long as I can with doing this. Well, I'm not a clinician, I'm a biologist. And the main drive force for me is curiosity. And I believe that the most efficient research is curiosity-driven. You need to be 
sick of the questions what you are studying. You need to have this constant drive to understand and to achieve more. We are saying that the research is not eight hour a day work. You work with your brain intellectually all the time and you are trying to solve the problems which are in front of you constantly. And that's what has been happening with me for many years now and I hope that, that this curiosity will not leave me until I will probably retire. Without curiosity and without the drive of understanding better the nature and the human being, it's impossible to do any biomedical research and I believe that this is the major drive not only for me but for many people who are successfully working in the biomedical research. Thank you.